Let's talk about the NECC as our final conference here. I think you start with Eastside. Yeah. And I know they're in the small division, but if you were to t- tell me who the best team is in this conference, I would still pick them if they were in the large division. I like Eastside a lot, yeah. and they return uh, 15 or 16 starters. They return a sophomore quarterback. They return a lot of guys on defense. Lane Kleckner makes it go in the middle for them. Yeah. Um, is Eastside the team to beat in your eyes in the NECC regardless of division. Uh, yeah, I think so right now. I think you make a case for maybe West Noble. Uh, Angola should bounce back mm-hmm. after four and six last year. But when you look at Eastside and what they bring back from a 10-win team when their first sectional in program history last year, not only do I see them as decided favorites in that small school division, but could they make some serious noise in the 2A playoffs? I think they're that good, and they return so much on both sides of the football. So I know Coach Mason's tremendously excited. You, you expect Laban Davis then to take the next step in his development, another junior quarterback that's tremendously talented. We have so many in this area. I think you take the reins off him a little bit, maybe allow him to make some decisions with the football, too, in some, in some read situations. And I don't think anybody can really challenge them in the small school. And we'll see in the big school with the games they have coming up. I really see East Side as truly being set up for could be a real tremendous season for them. West Noble won the big division last year. Obviously, uh, you've got Brandon Pruitt, who went to Navy. Now he's going to be at Western Illinois. Um, you've got Josh Gross, who's going to be playing some college football. Everyone says, oh, man, they're going to be – hit really hard by graduation. It was kind of like we were talking about earlier. They actually didn't lose yeah. that many guys. It's just the guys that they graduated were really big on both sides of the football. Yeah, you know, Gross and, uh, and, and Pruitt stand out. But you have Braxton, Brandon's younger brother, who mm-hmm. if he wasn't overshadowed by Brandon last year, we would have been wowed by his stat line. So he'll continue to, to be physical defensively, and I think he'll step into – a primary back role that Brandon was in a year ago. So watch out for Braxton Pruitt. I don't see an undefeated regular season for West Noble mm-hmm. this year, but for people thinking they lost so much that they'll drop significantly, I'm not sure that's the case. If you're, you know, Lakeland and Garrett, how do you get back in the, the conference hunt? Obviously, Coach O'Shea is taking over at Lakeland. And then for Garrett, um, you know, they got hit hard with the Colin Cope injury in, in week yeah. two. Second play of the second game, if I recall, last year. Um, and he was going to be their, their bell cow at yeah. the running back position. Obviously, health is of most importance for Garrett based off that. But how do they go forward? Because this is a proud program. Yeah. They went 3-7 and seven last year. They don't want to do that again. Yeah, and it was just one of those years for Garrett last year where, man, the injury bug was just tremendous. They were down at several positions to, you know, second, third, fourth options. So it was just one of those years where it kind of piled on for Garrett. But it is a pivotal year for them, too. I think you want to see them bounce back, particularly in that community that wants a winner on Friday nights. And uh, Coach DePew's the guy to do it. Uh, he answers to himself in terms of being the athletic director as well. So I think the onus for Garrett has been stay healthy. Let's get some wins early and really see where that takes us. On the small division side, outside of east side, how do, who do you see competing for, you know, second, third place in yeah. that conference? Because Busco really graduated. Yeah. We talk about West Noble graduating the key guys. Busco graduated the key guys yeah. and then a bunch of other people too. Yeah. Like they, I don't know if there's a team in the area production-wise, if you looked at the percentages, that lost as much as Busco due yeah. to graduation. Central Noble's got a new head coach. He's a young guy, but we've seen in years past under Coach Tipton and Greg Moe, like, this is a team that can jump up and surprise you. Yeah, it's going to have enough numbers at Central Noble to maybe be a dangerous team. I'm still putting Cherubusco in that second spot just because it's of Cherubusco? their winning. Yeah, it's Cherubusco, 15 straight winning seasons. The scheme they run will fit whatever personnel they have. Uh, you lose guys like, uh, like Gage and Folk and Wood, and it, it hurts, but you have Hunter Bianski back. You have Nick mm-hmm. Nondorf back. I think both of those guys are going to emerge as the next group of true two-way studs for Cherubusco. That system that they run is mm-hmm. always, you know, really levels the playing field. But I think we were all surprised last year. Was it week four or five when Eastside went in there and just really walloped them? Uh, and we felt like Cherubusco was that team to beat in the small school division. So they got something to prove. They lost a lot, but uh, they're still going to be there, in my opinion. They just may be a level under Eastside. That was that was when everybody started to take note yeah. of these. Like that was the way that the pendulum shifted yeah. in that game, you're right. It was it was crazy. It was one of those games where if you were there, you were just waiting until it swung the other way, and next thing you knew you were late in the third, and you were like, it's not turning. 
That's crazy. Yeah. What are you most looking forward to about week one as we, as we wrap this baby up? Actual football. I think <laughs> you and I both, even in a normal year, are just tired of hearing about how this team's going to be good and this team's going to be bad. And, and, you know, you're tired of the smoke. <laughs> we want to actually see football. We can start analyzing these teams because everybody's excited right now, right? Everybody feels like they can win their conference. And that's going to change pretty quick starting week one. You look at some of these sneaky teams. Can New Haven be there? Can Northside be there? Can Bluffton be there? It's time to really show up. And uh, everything that's gone on with, with the pandemic and, and really thrown this football season for a loop over the spring and summer, it's out of mind. Now, we, it may look different on Friday nights where we're out, where we're out seeing games, but mm-hmm. it comes down to executing on the football field. We see who can hit the ground running coming up. All right, and we will see that this Friday on the Highlight Zone, and then we'll be chatting about it next Monday right here on Inside the Zone with Justin Kenny of Ops. That'll do it for our Week 1 preview. We'll see you next Monday here on Wayne.com.